pistachio cream and they just have a bunch of different amazing sandwiches. I got the mortadella and pistachio cream one. It was to die for. It was fantastic, amazing. I'm dreaming about it. I want one right now. Um, I'm definitely going to go to Manhattan at some point and try the one there and see if it like holds a flame to the one in actual Italy. Um, we went there. We got lunch. We did wait in line, but it wasn't like insanity because it was early-ish. It was like 1130. Then we went to the, well, we sat at the Pantheon and ate. We didn't go in. Um, but then we went to, sorry, <laughs> the Coliseum. We waited in a really long line for that because every first Sunday of the month, it is free to go inside the Coliseum. AK, we weren't able to do like a skip the line type of thing. We didn't have a tour guide. We did everything on our own. Again, I had been to the Coliseum, but it's still, I mean, it's huge. It's such a sight to see. It's so cool. And that was one of the things Tony really wanted to do. So we went there. Um, it was beautiful. We were sweaty, but it was fine. And then we went and walked through the Roman Forum, which was also really cool to see. Part of us wished we had a tour guide for this because a lot of it we didn't really know what we were looking at. It just looks like rocks, right? For the stuff that's not like super preserved. But still very cool to see. We went back to our hotel then and we got ready for dinner. Um, we ended up taking the hotel's recommendation for a dinner place that was walkable. I had originally made a reservation at some place that was like a 10 minute drive, um, but we just figured the hotel recommended this place. It's walkable. We're fucking exhausted. Let's just go here. Of course, I got the carbonara. It was delicious. Tony wished he had also gotten it. Um, at that point, we were fighting over... I literally don't even know nothing. We were just grumpy and exhausted, which I think is like normal for <laughs> that type of trip, no matter who you travel with. Um, we were too full to get gelato, but we walked around, we went back to our hotel, and we just went to sleep. The next morning was the day that the cruise officially began. So we set up to actually take a shuttle through the hotel our hotel, like, you know, would shuttle you from the airport to the cruise ships and all that, which was great. I definitely paid a lot for it, but I paid for the convenience of just booking it all through the hotel. That was safe, trusted source, and we didn't have to figure a lot out, you know what I mean? I wanted a lot of convenience. So the hotel drove us about 90 minutes to the cruise port, um, and I think I was asleep for like most of the car ride because I was so sleepy, which is rare. I don't fall asleep in the car, so you know I was tired. So we got on the boat um, and we just kind of went and unpacked our stuff in our room. Once again, there is a tour of our room on my website. Um, we did have a balcony, which was great. I'm so glad I paid the $3,000 to upgrade to a balcony. We used it very often. It was worth it um, for that length of a vacation. So, yeah, we just kind of unpacked our stuff. We had dinner, we had a couple of drinks, and we went to sleep to be prepared for, you know, real day one, which was the Amalfi Coast. Um, so the Amalfi Coast was... It's between Mykonos and the Amalfi Coast, of which day is my favorite, or was my favorite. I might have to pick the Amalfi Coast, though, by a hair, and I'll tell you why. So, on this day, we did a private boat day. Um, as far as prices for these things, I'll, like, speak to it when I can. I think that's a whole nother video, whatever. Um, but just for like some context. I found most of these excursions tour guides 
um, things like that through TripAdvisor. I did not do them through the actual cruise ship because I wanted private stuff and the cruise ship really only offered like small group excursions which I wasn't interested in really doing on our honeymoon. The boat Amalfi Coast Day was like $1,200 or something like that which is a lot of money but this was an 8 hour day of a 32 foot big beautiful boat it had a bathroom on it it had a place where you could lay out in the front or the back of the boat they gave us um, alcohol, wine, beer um, prosecco they gave us snacks and gave us a whole you know, tour of the coast so I've rented many a private boat in my day because I love a boat and for reference of like what it can cost when we were in Mexico things are a lot cheaper there but we had a like a 42 foot yacht that was gorgeous and that was same thing like an 8 hour day they actually fed us and like made us like skewers and steak and whatever we had all the like a full bar liquor and all that that was 1400 sometimes you have to pay for gas in addition it's sometimes not included and of course you have to tip your your captain and your staff and you should tip them well um but then i've also like rented a pontoon in fucking the poconos pennsylvania for and a seven hour day where you drive the boat yourself it's a pontoon there's no captain there's no nothing um and that's that could be like 750 dollars so all things considering like it's the price isn't that bad especially like if you're splitting it with people right like you're not usually going on a boat by yourself <laughs> um so yeah just to give you context so we went on this beautiful boat, um, it was leisurely relaxed, we listened to music as we explored the coast, we stopped to swim a couple times as well as stopped for lunch on the beach, it was amazing, I got 
and say one thing to him and then they um, uh, tipped him kind of cheaply I think they gave him like 50 euros for um, which is like I guess a, an okay tip as like a normal person but like for billionaires it's like not that great um, so that was interesting he said he also had Kit Harrington, Don Snow his wife uh, and that they were lovely and pleasant and very kind there was other celebrities that he had driven around as well so I was like oh my god like that's so freaking cool um, so he was really cool and he just brought us around and show us like the blue uh, churches right and all the things although I just loved the beach and the boat portion of all the things so of course I loved the beach club that we went to afterwards the most again it was called 41 we had a reservation there our guide said like oh it's really good here I know these people like you made a really good choice I was like oh fantastic so we had a cabana there it was very expensive it was like 350 euros um for the day although we only had it for like half a day um and it included your cabana it included a bottle of champagne a fruit platter and then sushi as well there was a little skimp on the sushi though like i was expecting to get a little bit more um to be order more food i don't think we did um so we swam in the ocean the water was beautiful but it was chilly the beaches themselves all of the beaches I went to uh, like were rocky right like the beach in the Amalfi Coast the rocks oh my god it was like Tony couldn't even go in like he literally has feet he has sensitive feet <laughs> legitimately the beach was like just rocks with boulders Santorini, it was black sand beaches from like volcanic ash or whatever. Oh, I forgot to say we did also go to a winery in Santorini and we had a little snack there. We had charcuterie and wine and stuff. So that was before the beach club. So that was really nice. Um, anyway, uh, so yeah, Santorini's beach was black sand. It was very hot because it was black and then the beach in Mykonos was the most normal I guess as far as like well not really it was still a little rocky so comparative to like the beaches in like Mexico and Jamaica with like sand which was what I'm used to right like with the Jersey Shore like we have sand and it's not doesn't hurt my feet that part wasn't great um but the water was clear it was cold it probably wasn't as clear as it could have been only because the sand was so dark so it made it look darker still a really fun day beautiful we got a little drunk late in the sun went back on the cruise ship um so then the next day was Kusadasi, turkey um, where ephesus the ancient city of ephesus is like one of the main attractions now, truthfully, for me, this agenda was, of the cruise, was perfect. I wanted to do Santorini, I wanted to do Mykonos, Amalfi Coast, Sicily, um, Rome. I didn't necessarily care about Turkey, it was just kind of like an added, like, oh, okay, bonus, like, we'll see another place that we've never seen. But I didn't necessarily have, like, um... A wish list of things I wanted to do there so we essentially just got like a short half day it ended up being a little longer because our tour guide was just nice and like wanted to extend things a little we went we had a private tour guide that was the cheapest day that only cost I think like $125 for her for the day and again you know we tipped these people um the tour guides themselves. Uh, 
reservation for whatever time. Fucking bullshit. You couldn't make reservations for dinner in advance. And you could only make them once you were not only on the ship, but in your stateroom with your Wi-Fi connected. Which, when we first got on the ship, our room wasn't ready yet. And then we had to go. We had to figure out the Wi-Fi. By that point, I'm not thinking about dinner reservations. So the only dinner reservations they had at all over this restaurant was 9.30 p.m. It's like, this is ridiculous. Like, so you don't give anybody, it's like the first three people that want to eat at a normal hour can. Everybody else has to either go to the buffet or eat at 11 p.m. So the first night we tried to just like walk into the restaurant and I was really annoyed at the way that they did things at this point. So I said to the guy, like, he's like, yeah, there's nothing, like, sorry, I was like, are you fucking kidding me, like, I actually, I, like, made a point, I was like, this is so ridiculous, I was like, there's not one reservation at this restaurant until 9.30 every single night, like, I'm on my honeymoon, I'm supposed to, like, eat at the buffet every single night, like, it's already so much later there, right, than it is at home, he's like, okay, okay, like, and he got me a reservation at the restaurant the next night for eight, um, and then eventually we kind of figured out, like, if you went at, like, nine, like, you were fine and you didn't really need a reservation, so we started to, like, go towards 8, 45, 9 o'clock. There was one night we went to the steakhouse that you had to pay more for. Um, I actually got so sick from that, but I have a thing lately where when I eat steak, I get really sick, so I'm actually now completely, like, done with it. That's another story for another day. I think I have fucking IBS. I don't know. Um, so anyway, um, so, and, and the food on the, it was like fine. Like the food was fine. It was what you would expect on a cruise or like on a resort. Um, nothing was amazing. Even the steakhouse where we had to pay, the mac and cheese was pitiful. It was craft. Like it was craft. <laughs> steak. Maybe I lost a little weight whenever I got sick <laughs> after eating everything and drinking alcohol for seven days. So, looking at the bright side. So, final day was Mykonos, and this was definitely my one of my top days for sure. We split the day between Beach Club. We did a Bronco Beach Club and uh, having a private boat. This private boat cost for four hours. It was originally supposed to be like, I think a little under 600 euros, but we requested that they pick us up from Bronco and then bring us back to the cruise board. So I had to pay extra money for like gas and like the trip. So I think like in total it was maybe like a thousand bucks or something for like a four hour Mykonos is also expensive. Like, it's very expensive. Bronco, we got chairs instead of a cabana, which it was $150 just to sit there, just to have the chairs. 150 euros. Whatever. Um, and we ordered sushi and lunch and whatever at our seats, and that was beautiful. I picked Bronco because, so Mykonos is, of course, known for, like, while partying and stuff, and they have got a lot of these, like, day club, beach clubs that, like, turn up. The names of them are escaping my, my brain. I know there's, like, Scorpios, and they, they're nighttime things, too. Like, they become nightclubs at night. But I wanted to go to one that was slightly more chill for the honeymoon, because we weren't, like, raging, um, on our honeymoon. But still, they were playing some vibey music. Like, we got there at 10 a.m. right when it opened. And, um, so it's, it, like, got a little vibier as the day went on. We had to leave at 2 to get picked up from our boat. I, we could have definitely, like, stayed the whole day there and, like, had an amazing time. So we were sad to leave, but obviously excited about going on the boat. The boat was amazing. It was this really cool, like, it was like, I don't want to say blow up boat. Again, there's video footage of it in my vlog. But it was small, but it was cool looking. It was new, and it actually had a, like, a bathroom, like a hidden bathroom. I didn't even realize that there was a toilet on it, which was so interesting. 
interesting. Um, it was the coolest little boat. And Tony looked up the price for a boat like that because he's like, let's get a boat, let's get a boat. I'm like, yeah, we're not getting a boat, but like, let's, let's fantasize. It was like $200,000. Uh...
Sarah, first 